Good morning. This is Pastor Todd C. Davidson, and I am so excited uh, to welcome you to our cyber church. We recognize that uh, the building may be closed, but the church is always open because you are, I am, we are the church. And so we invite you to worship with us. And we want to provide you with a worship experience that's God honoring, Christ centered and spirit filled. Come on and go with me to my father's house. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. If you would bow with me for a word of prayer. Eternal God, we thank you today. Uh, we welcome you into this place and into this space. We welcome you into our cyber worship. Uh, we pray now, God, for those who are ailing in their bodies, for those who are troubled in their minds. We're praying, God, for our elders, God, who some of whom are isolated and alienated. We pray, God, that the power of your presence, that they would feel the power of your presence permeate, God, through these airwaves. We pray now, God, that you would inhabit our praises, that you would be honored by our worship, that you would be pleased with all we do and say in this space. We ask all of this in the mighty, matchless, and majestic name of Jesus the Christ, your Son and our Savior. And we all say it together, amen. And amen. Please join us for praise and worship. Come on, everybody. Let's put our hands together and give God some praise. Because we know we serve an everlasting God. And no matter what comes, no matter what goes, he never changes. He always is exactly who he is. He's able to do whatever. So let's sing together. Say, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Shall I be a friend? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Say, I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. Say, I will trust. I will remain 
to know that as the coronavirus causes chaos and calamity all over the world, that the Lord is my light and my salvation, and that I will remain confident in this, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There is a word from the Lord. I ask that you would draw your attention to the book of Acts chapter 3. The book of Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 1 and concluding at verse 8. And the New International Version says, One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked at him and as John did. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. The word of God for the people of God. We thank the Lord for his word. I'd like to tag this particular text and message for these brief moments of sharing together that we have on this day with the title, From Rejection to Revival. From Rejection to Revival. When I was a high school junior, I was playing on our basketball team and we were playing our crosstown rival. We were battling for an opportunity to be on top of our conference. Uh, I was, of course, bombing threes and mid-range jump shots on them, just crushing them from the outside. They passed it to me in the corner three-pointer. From the top of the key, three-pointer. From inside the arc, three-pointer. I was in a zone. I didn't believe that I could be stopped. 
They had this guy, however, on their team who was six foot nine. I was feeling it, so this time I decided not to pull up for a jump shot where I had been connecting all game, but I decided to take it inside with the big boys. I had a clear path to the basket. I was going in for a dunk. I'm just playing. I wasn't going to dunk it just for a layup. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this 6'9 cat shows up and blocks my shot. He rejects my shot. I rebound the ball, put it up again, reject it. A third time, I put it up. He rejects it. My shot got rejected. I had a hot hand, but still got rejected. I couldn't miss, but I got rejected. Life's rough patches and life's rough places can make you feel like all of the stuff that you're throwing up is rejected. When you're troubled in your spirit, it can feel like even the prayers that you're sending up are being rejected. We're searching for a career or trying to elevate and what we're doing rejected. We ask for one thing and get something else. It feels like we're rejected. We think we've been living right, loving folk right, encouraging folk right, but we still experience the pains uh, of feeling rejected. Uh, in a real sense though, not only are we subjected to being victims of rejection, we also have a propensity for rejecting each other, rejecting each other's ideas, rejecting each other's dreams, uh, rejecting each other's hope, rejecting folk that come into the church without our credentials of Christianity, rejecting our community businesses, rejecting the relationships God meant for your good. The church is well schooled uh, in the art of rejection. Uh, when God wants to bless you, uh, he does not send you stuff. Uh, he sends people into your life. Uh, and we're so busy being mean, nasty, hard-hearted, and don't like people. Uh, we want God to bless us while cursing everybody else. Uh, but the blessing shows up through people. Uh, the person with you, the person in your house right now, the person sent to you might be the one who's supposed to bless you, uh, but you rejected the richness uh, of the relationship. That's what happened when the Bible says uh, Jesus came to his own uh, and they received him not. Uh, that's rejection. There are many people in our communities right now uh, who feel rejected, substandard housing, uh, drug-infested streets, uh, low-wage jobs, and limited opportunities, uh, all with churches on every corner, they have been rejected. Uh, no, but the good news is uh, that I learned that day on the basketball court uh, is that rejection doesn't mean it's over. Uh, rejection doesn't mean I'm finished. Uh, but rejection is an opportunity uh, for God to set you up for revival. Uh, just because I got rejected those three times uh, doesn't mean I didn't score anymore. Uh, I did drop 20 on them uh, and hit a game winner to send our team to the playoffs. Uh, but rejection was simply a setup uh, for revival. Uh, and I really think that what's going on right now in our world and in our communities, uh, God is putting us in a position uh, for a grand revival, uh, a revival in our homes, uh, a revival in our neighborhoods, uh, a revival in places where there is no hope, uh, that that's what ultimately happened uh, to this brother in the text. Uh, every day he was dropped off at the church's footstep. Uh, every day people would walk right by him, uh, not notice him or his condition. Uh, they would reject him, uh, rejected by the members of the church, uh, rejected by a community uh, that didn't believe he had anything of value to offer. Uh, rejected by good Christian folk. Uh, rejected by his own family. Uh, this brother had experienced rejection uh, because if he hadn't been rejected, uh, he would not have come to the same position every day uh, to try to get what he needed. Uh, he probably had dreamed of one day uh, when deliverance would show up. Uh, uh, one day when his, somebody would notice him. Uh, one day he would find a new friend. Uh, and this day he dreams that he had been that, that had been deferred uh, started to materialize. Uh, his existence had been reduced to being dropped off at the church every day to beg for some food and for some financial support. Uh, but today, he asked for help from a brother named Peter who knew what rejection feels like. Uh, he looked up a brother. He hooked up with a brother who remembered rejecting Jesus three times. Uh, he remembered rejecting the Savior, warning that the Savior's warning that Satan uh, desired to sift him as weed. Uh, so Peter and John showed his brother that rejection is just a chance uh, for revival. Uh, and so we learn through this situation that if you can look beyond the rejection, uh, if you can look beyond what's going on now uh, and keep showing up with God, uh, keep praying in faith, uh, keep living with God, uh, live your faith in context. Uh, you look beyond the rejection uh, and keep asking the question. Uh, look beyond the rejection uh, and keep saying, Lord, here I am. See about me uh, that God can use your rejection to make you rise beyond your wildest imagination. Because uh, once you meet God, uh, once you know the love of Jesus, uh, you understand that rejection is 
is just temporary. Uh, the brother had been asking for the wrong stuff at the gate. Uh, the Bible says there is now therefore no condemnation uh, to them which are in Christ Jesus. Uh, in Jesus there is no rejection. Uh, in Jesus you get undeniable admission. Uh, in Jesus you get unlimited access. Uh, so the key to dealing with rejection, uh, the key to dealing with rejection uh, in our neighborhoods and substandard conditions, the key to dealing with sickness and illness uh, starts with in Christ. Uh, Jesus makes rejection have a meaning. Uh, Jesus gives power to the faint. Uh, Jesus sends strength to your weakness. Uh, he gets turns midnight into day. Uh, he turns darkness into light. Uh, and if we can give folk Jesus, uh, not just the name Jesus, uh, but if we can give them the love of Jesus, uh, the grace of Jesus, uh, the hope of Jesus, uh, the mercy of Jesus, uh, the justice of Jesus, uh, then rejection is a bridge uh, to our revival. Uh, our ancestors were rejected. Uh, rejected because of their skin color. Uh, rejected by the laws of this land. Uh, rejected uh, by a segregationist system. Uh, but because they knew God's love, uh, their rejection was just a chance to rally. Uh, to rally and be at the top of their class. Uh, to rally and get patents on their inventions. Uh, to rally and build their own schools. Uh, to rally and build their own banks. Uh, to rally and build their own churches. Uh, if we can show the love of God, then the world will know that rejection uh, is just a chance to be revived. I'm in the book. Come here, Joseph, rejected by his brothers, thrown into a pit, but God moved him from the pit to the penthouse palace. Uh, that, that was rejection leading to revival. He got a resurgence, a uh, revival in his attitude, in his altitude, and in his dreams. Jesus himself rejected by Herod, uh, rejected by the innkeeper, rejected by the Pharisees, the Sadducees, uh, but he rallied and redeemed the whole world. The question that the text pushes us to raise, though, is what are the lessons that I learned during this season when I feel like we're being rejected? How does God use rejection to move us to revival? There are three answers, I promise you, and we'll keep getting up first. You got to understand that sometimes rejection shows up for redirection. Uh, the, the, this brother had been left at the gate begging this day Peter and John walk up on him and he catches their attention he, he's asking for some money begging for financial support but his request for financial support is denied it's denied rejected but the rejection was only temporary. His attention, his focus, his aims uh, were redirected. It isn't only silver and gold that you need, my brother, but you need something foundational, something that will sustain you when the silver and gold and the toilet paper and, and the paper towels run out, he was redirected. And the truth is that sometimes you will meet with rejection. Sometimes the answer won't be in your favor. Sometimes what you want ain't what you're going to get, uh, but it might simply be a sign uh, that God is redirecting your life. Uh, Sometimes you end up asking God for the wrong stuff. We ask for a job, but what you need is work ethic. You ask for some money, but what you need are some morals. You ask for success, but what you need is sanctification. Sometimes rejection is to redirect you. I know you're not feeling that yet. Now, 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 you don't have to go to a gas station now, nowadays to ask what's the quickest way to get from point A to point B. All you need to do is pull out your handy global positioning system. You can look it up on your phone through the GPS. Uh, plug in the address and simply follow the directions. Well, one day I was driving. I decided to use uh, my GPS to get where I was going. The GPS said, turn right, and so I turned right. Uh, the GPS said, enter I-271, so we entered I-271. However, when the GPS said, make a right, I thought I knew a better way. Uh, instead of making a right, I made a left because I knew a better way. Because uh, I was listening to my voice uh, and not the voice of the GPS. Uh, when I turn left, the GPS said, uh, you are now off track. Uh, but I'm so glad that the GPS didn't stop there. Uh, a second later, it said, rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. Uh, ain't that like the GPS? Uh, I'm not talking about your global positioning system. Uh, I'm talking about God's uh, positioning system. Uh, when you get off track, God starts rerouting you. Uh, he starts redirecting your life. Uh, and God will use whatever means uh, he has to use uh, to redirect your life for revival. Uh, he'll redirect your ministry. Uh, redirect what the church means. Uh, he'll redirect your leadership. Uh, he redirects you so every valley in your life can be exalted. Uh, every mountain can be made low. Uh, the crooked can be made straight. Uh, and the rough places made plain. Uh, don't fight his redirection. Uh, he de redirects you so his glory can be revealed in your life. And so all flesh can see it together. Sometimes rejection is simply for redirection. But that ain't all. Secondly, redirection will lead you to revelation. When, 
when the brother has his attention redirected from his request for money to something different, he gets a revelation. A revelation that there is a power and a force in the world that's greater than money. There's a power that can change your condition. A power that can change your outlook, that can move you and mend you and mold you. Peter and John are simply saying, money might give you a temporary fix, but let me kick some knowledge to you. In the name of Jesus. Ah, the revelation is that there is power in Jesus. They were telling the brother that maybe folks have pacified you. Maybe people have treated you as less than. Maybe folk didn't view you like their brother, but we're going to welcome you to this new family in the name of Jesus. Huh? When God redirects you, it often leads to revelation. Huh? He'll reveal how much you can depend on him. He'll reveal the greatness in your life. Huh? He'll reveal how much he loves you. He'll reveal peace you can't understand. Huh? He'll reveal uh, a word for your life. Huh? He'll reveal he for your body. Huh? Redirection leads to revelation. Huh? To be laid aside in life by age or by sickness or by loneliness or by diversion of the public attention. Huh? It's hard to live in isolation. Huh? It's hard to live uh, without the love of family. Huh? It's hard to live in quarantine. Huh? To be cast off as useless huh? or forgettable or broken or battered or beleaguered is tough to overcome. Huh? To be treated as if you're not good enough huh? or you don't have enough huh? or you don't know enough is rough. Huh? To to be pacified or vilified, to feel damnified, mortified, petrified, and nullified ain't easy to live. But the revelation is that as long as God keeps you in the world, it's for a great and good purpose, and he'll always give you something to do. You've never done enough as long as there's more that needs to be done. Sometimes God will redirect us to reveal to us that what we've been asking for and what we've been seeking after are the wrong things in life. Maybe we get so wrapped wrapped up in a worldly western view of success huh, that we forget to seek first huh, the kingdom of God huh, and we need new revelation. Huh. Well, well, let me put it like this. Huh. One day while printing something, huh, I noticed a blank page. Huh. I initially thought the printer was malfunctioning. I thought this until I looked near the bottom of the blank page huh, and saw this note. It said page intentionally left blank. Help me, Holy Ghost. After a sigh of relief, a different section of the report began to spout from the printer. When that section finished another blank page followed with the same note page intentionally left blank. A few seconds later a new section began to print as I thought about it I realized that the blank page that came at the end of each section served two purposes for me first it informed me that the previous section was over it had ended secondly it informed me that a new section was getting ready to begin and see sometimes sometimes God will seem silent you will wonder what's going on in the world and where is God God, but it's possible that the current page in your life may have been intentionally left blank by God to let you know that a new chapter is on its way. I'm in the Bible because my Bible says that beloved now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. That's revelation. A new chapter requires a new revelation. Revelation that remind you huh, to put on the whole armor of God huh, so you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Huh? Revelation that says that faith huh, without working is dead. Huh? A revelation that says nothing, huh, and I mean nothing, huh, shall separate you from the love of God, huh, which is in Christ Jesus. Huh? Revelation that says by his stripes I am healed. Huh? Revelation that says I am a friend of God. Huh? Redirection leads to revelation. Sometimes Rejection is for redirection. Redirection leads to revelation. And third and finally, and I'm done, revelation will lead us to revival. This is the celebration, the shout of the text. The progression of this narrative shows you that the ultimate aim of revelation and one of the outcomes of rejection is revival. Peter and John culminate what looks like rejection with an invitation to radical revival and revitalization. They say, we don't have what you asked for, that's rejection. But we're more interested in dealing with what we do have. That's revelation in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. That's revival. So what looked like rejection initially, we ain't got no money. What looked like a door closing was in this case just a setup for revival. 
The truth is that the revelation of the name of Jesus, the revelation that there is a Savior and a source who can do exceeding abundantly above all you're asking or thinking, the revelation that there is something far greater than riches and rubies. There's somebody that will be your voice when you can't speak for yourself. Somebody who can make you run when nobody's chasing you, make you laugh when there is no joke, make you dance when no music playing, make you sing with no melody, and make you holler when nobody's pinching you. Uh, the revelation of the name of Jesus uh, and what he means to your life ought to lead to revelation. Uh, our community might have been rejected. Uh, our neighborhoods have been rejected. Uh, some of our students have been rejected. Uh, our brothers and sisters who are homeless have, have been rejected. Our lonely have been rejected. Our elders are being rejected. But God is saying today that if the church will show people uh, the power in the name of Jesus, uh, then he's revealing that he will have and lead a revival. Uh, revival will not only strengthen your soul, uh, but it will strengthen our streets. Uh, revival in the halls of our high schools. Uh, revival in our daycare centers, uh, revival in crack houses and dope dens, uh, revival in gang country, uh, revival in the community center, uh, revival in the centers for arts, uh, revival in our sense of family, uh, revival that brings us together, uh, revival uh, that makes boys uh, decide that they want to follow God, uh, revival that makes girls uh, know that they are children of God, uh, revival that leads the generations uh, to talk to each other, uh, revival that helps us pass uh, on our collective story, uh, revival that makes us one loving community in Jesus Christ. We're being set up by the Lord for revival. An angry newspaper subscriber stormed into a reporter's office and demanded an apology because he had been mistakenly put in the obituary column. The reporter said, I never write retractions, but what I will do tomorrow is I list you in the birth column so I can give you a brand new start. You do know the Bible says, for this we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord uh, and are the called according to his purpose. Uh, revival doesn't give your life uh, a retraction, uh, but I'm so glad uh, that God is able uh, to give us a brand new start. Uh, if any person be in Christ, uh, you are a new creature. Uh, old things are passed away. Uh, God gives you a brand new start. Uh, every morning you get up, uh, his mercy is new. Uh, I got a brand new start. Uh, every morning uh, his compassion is new. Uh, I got a brand new start. Uh, every morning I've got a chance for revival every day I got a new chance and I got a new choice and I got a new charge and I got a new command and I've got new control and I've got new capacity every day God drops revival in your soul every breath you take is a sign of revival every heart beating rhythm is a sign of revival every prayer you pray is a sign of revival every new idea is a sign of revival. Uh, instead of redlining, uh, we need revival. Uh, instead of racket, uh, we need revival. Uh, instead of ruckus, uh, we need revival. Uh, instead of ridicule, uh, we need revival. Uh, revival just means uh, that you realize uh, that God is your source uh, and God is your strength. Uh, you are somebody uh, and you can do something. Uh, just because somebody uh, can't do one thing uh, doesn't mean that they can't do anything. Uh, all of us got something uh, that God wants us to do. Uh, you're not bound uh, by any limitations. Uh, you are somebody uh, made in God's image, uh, fashioned in God's likeness, uh, and filled with God's spirit. Uh, you are a child. Uh, you are a child. Uh, you are a child of God. Uh, let me park on this curb. Uh, can I tell you when you encounter rejection, uh, you're keeping good company? Uh, can I tell you about God's son uh, and your savior, uh, the king of glory, uh, the Lord of lords? He tiptoed through the back door of human history. He was rejected before he was born by an innkeeper with no more room. He was born to a disadvantaged people called the disinherited. He was born with a bounty on top of his head. When he was 12 years old, his father died. He had to hang out in the wilderness for 40 days, but he came out doing good. The blind received sight, but he was still rejected. The deaf could hear here, huh? but he was still rejected. Huh? He raised dead folk, huh? but he was still rejected. Huh? The more good he did, huh? the more rejected he was. Huh? Pharisees rejected. Huh? Scribes rejected him. Huh? Sadducees rejected. Huh? Herodians rejected him. Huh? He selected 12 homeboys to train, huh? but in the end, huh? they all turned on him. Huh? He was rejected. Huh? Rejected by the people who shouted, huh? free Barabbas. Huh? He knows about rejection, and, huh? and not only was
was he rejected then, but we reject him now. We reject him when we don't love each other. We reject him when we don't give our all. We reject him when we are selfish and driven by greed. But I'm so glad that my Jesus and your Jesus specializes in revival. I'm glad that he uses rejection to lead to revival. Jesus flipped the script. You know Jesus, don't you? Can I talk for a second just about my Jesus? I got to testify today because he gives me strength in between rejection till I get to revival. Jesus is entirely sincere and eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful, imperially powerful, impartially merciful. He's God's son. He's the sinner savior, the centerpiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is supreme and he is preeminent. And he's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest idea in philosophy. He's the truth in theology. He's the miracle of this age. He's the only one able to supply all of our needs at the same time. He's to give strength to the weak. He's available for the tempted. He's available for the tried. He sympathizes and he saves your soul. And he guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the leper. He forgives the sinner. He discharges your debt. He delivers the captive. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. Is there anybody that knows my Jesus? I learned that my king is the king of all knowledge. The wellspring of wisdom. The doorway to deliverance. The pathway to peace. The roadway to righteousness. The highway to holiness. The gateway to glory. The master of the mighty. The captain of the conqueror. The overseer of overcomers. The head of the heroes. The governor of governors. The prince of princes. The king of kings. And the lord of lords. And his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. And if I wish I could describe him to you, but he's indescribable. He's indestructible. He is invincible. He's irresistible. I'm trying to tell somebody that the heavens can't explain him. A man can't talk about him. You can't get him out of your mind and you can't get him off your hands. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. He was rejected and he died on Friday. But my Bible says that early on Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands. If you love him right where you are, shout yes! 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 As long as we've got Jesus, as long as we live with the love of Jesus, God, I promise you, God will, even during this season, he'll lead us from rejection, from the rejection of disease and quarantine, the rejection of isolation and alienation. He's leading us to revival. Yes, yes, just trust in the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the power of your word. We pray, God, that your word would serve as a lamp unto our feet and a divine light to our paths. That, God, we would be strengthened by it so that it can carry us through God, as we find creative and unique ways to continue to maintain covenant community, to continue to stay connected to each other, allow your Holy Spirit to be the binding element that keeps us close to you and close to each other. There's somebody, God, who's watching, watching the stream, God, we pray, who needs to know you in the pardoning of their sins who might need a church family, a church home, a place of spiritual refuge. We pray, God, that as we offer the opportunity to yield their lives to Christ, that, God, they would say yes. 
And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Amen. And amen. I want to make an appeal to you if you're watching us. I want to offer to you the opportunity now to give your life to Jesus the Christ. If you've yet to accept Jesus as your personal Savior and as your Lord, you have an opportunity now. Right where you are, you simply can say to God, I acknowledge that I need you in my life. And in this moment, I believe, just say I believe that Jesus died just for me. I believe that he rose on the third day morning. And I believe that he's coming back again one day. And if you've said that, if you believe that in your heart, if you believe in your heart that Jesus died and that God raised him from the dead, and that's the path to salvation. And you are saved. You are in the process of being saved today. Maybe you're watching and you need a church family. You say, I got to be connected during this season somehow, some way. I need to be a part of a covenant community. We offer to you this opportunity to become a part of the Antioch Church family. No matter where you are, you can connect with us. You can connect with a congregational family that will love you and support you. You'll find a deacon that can pray with you, preachers who will console you and counsel you. So if you want to become a part of this church family, offer you the opportunity, just send me a line at tdavidson at antiochcleveland.org and we'll make certain that we connect with you. If you have prayer requests, send your prayer request as well. We bless God for you. Thank you for watching. May God bless and keep you in his care.
Everybody help us sing. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I the grace of our God and the fellowship in the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit. Continue to rest, continue to rule, and continue to abide with you, us, with the whole world, now, henceforth, and forevermore. We want to leave this prayer with you today. As the world is going through, just remember that God is good all the time and all the time God is good may your struggles keep you near the cross and may your trust As we conclude our service today, I want to offer you an opportunity to continue to support the work of ministry here at Antioch Baptist Church. If you don't have a church home, we invite you uh, to, to provide continued resources to sustain the work of ministry. During this season, uh, we've seen a significant increase in the number of, of individuals and families that we serve through some of our extension ministry programs, like our Hot Meals program, and so we need your support. You can support the Antioch Baptist Church uh, by downloading the Givelify app and designating Antioch Baptist Church Cleveland as your place that you want to give. You can give through our website, antiochcleveland.org, or you can mail in your contribution to 8869 Cedar Road in Cleveland, Ohio, 44106. Uh, if you do have a church home, we encourage you to continue to support the work of ministry at your church home. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And we will get through this together.